somewhere in the back, um, Bob Osley, who is the president of the Indianapolis City County Council. Mm -hmm. <laughs> dignitaries over here, but I think somewhere else out in the house is um, Billy Rowe, um, part of our state, or, uh, retired state senator of my current right. <laughs> <laughs> Already. Um, so I will shut up now and ask uh, City County Councilor Ali Brown to uh, give you a walk. Hi, everybody. Hi. Welcome to the Prop Lam. Uh, first, I'm going to give you a Prop Lam a uh, little spiel, just some things if you need to use the restrooms. There's one here uh, directly in this hallway, and then there's a like, conference room here, there's another restroom. I'm sorry we can't allow you up on the second and third floor, but we're going to have a wedding bash here this weekend, and the rooms are being turned over. Um, but welcome to the Indianapolis Prop Lam. Now, take this off. It's where 501c3. Now it's counts, I like round speaking to you. <laughs> so, just drawing those lines. Uh, my name is Ellie Brown, I'm an Indianapolis City County Councilor, and I'm also very lucky and honored to be the Executive Director here at the Propylaeum. Um, I, like many of you, um, this is big shit, right? This is, it sucks. Um, but I want to tell you a story about May Wright Sewell, our founder, um, and the stuff that she went through. So our house, uh, probably it was 135 years old. We've been in this house for 100 years. Um, <laughs> May Wright Sewell, uh, who is an amazing person, a teacher by trade, from a farm in Wisconsin, moved to Indianapolis and became a teacher, not from a rich family, not from anything grand, someone people believed in. May went to a bunch of women's clubs across the city of Indianapolis and said, I want to talk about suffrage. And they said, well, we don't, we don't talk politics. And she said, well, I do. Actually, words were, well, I clamor. So, uh, May decided to start her own organization, and part of the prop plan, part of our mission is to be a place that connects and where women can connect to gather in safety. In 1888, when the prop plan was founded, women were not allowed to own property. So the women, a barrier set up with, you know, who can't open, pro open property? Corporations. Formed a corporation. They sold stock. And that to other women, only women, and that's how we built our first building, which is down on North Street. It's no longer there. In 1923, the state knocked it down to build a war memorial, but there are May's historical markers there. So I said, you know, there's a barrier. We're going to get through it. In 1890, so if any of you all remember uh, Freedom Indiana, the HJR3 stuff, and we were fighting the same-sex marriage amendment here in Indiana, uh, we learned a lot about the process in the state house to get something amended, to get our constitution amended. You have to pass the exact same piece of legislation. Two consecutive sessions without a change, and then it goes to the voters. In 1890, many of the women of the Propylaeum got that state house to vote for suffrage. Mm -hmm. And they voted for the women's rights. In 1892, when the women of the Propylaeum went back, oops, we lost your legislation. We don't have it. We can't pass it. It had to pass, because they only met once every two years back then. So the women of the Propylaeum said, this is BS. And they went and gathered 10,000 signatures of Hoosier women. If you've ever had to gather signatures for somebody on the ballot, to like get somebody on the ballot in the state of Indiana, it's 9,500. They got 10,000 120, 130 years ago. They were talking to the Speaker of the House. The Speaker of the House said, this might as well have been signed by 10,000 mice. <laughs> Throw it away. So the women of Prop Lamb said, screw that. And they continued on. And they fought, and they fought hard. May went on to, at, at the turn of the century, James Whitcomb Riley said the three most popular Hoosiers were in the country were Benjamin Harrison, who became president in 1888, May Wright Sewell, and himself, James Whitcomb Riley. <laughs> <laughs> May was well known. She founded 94 women's organizations, clubs, things around, places that you still enjoy, including the Indianapolis Museum of Art. She was one of the founders of that, and 140 years later, we have finally have our first woman leading. Yeah. Yeah. She also, yeah, and after, uh, first after man and first woman. Also, she founded the Heron School of Art. If you go there, you see the two beautiful uh, light posts. Those are, those are for May. May also founded the International Council of Women, traveled around the world talking about women's rights, which she knew at home she didn't have any. May dedicated her life. She was a teacher. She was the first head of Indianapolis Girls Classical School, a school that she demanded be fully integrated before that was a thing. So women of all colors could get an education. 
at what's now short Ridge High School. May fought so hard and fought her entire life. Her husband died in 1900 and she kept on. May died July 21st of 1920, exactly three weeks before Tennessee was the last state to ratify the right to vote. May spent her whole life fighting for women's rights, but never got to cast a vote. But what she did paved the way so 100 years later, an elected woman, a queer woman, an aggressive, progressive, woman can run to run this place. But what I, what I wanted you to take from that is not, I'm so cool, I run this place, is <laughs> that we all must plant seeds for trees that we may never sit under that shade, knowing that the women, that our daughters, our granddaughters, our nieces, they're going to carry it on. And that's what we do at the proper way, and that's what I do as a counselor. I often talk, I, you see me, and everyone's like, ooh, she's so tall. <laughs> I, yeah, I normally the tallest for people, person in the room, but that's only because I stand on the backs of giants. Oh, backs of giants like Senator Bro and <laughs> Senator Bro, and all the women who have come before and fought. And that's what our job is. Though things may not feel good at this moment, may things have been taken away from us, we have less rights than we were born with. We have to carry on because we know that it is valuable to carry those things on. That our goal is to continue to plant those trees. Maybe we will sit in that shade. Maybe we will sit there with our daughters, granddaughters, great granddaughters. But if not, they will know that we have covered them and we have taken care of them and we have provided them shade and fruit and a place to go on and a measuring post. So, Dr. Bernard and what she has done for women in just standing up has planted so many seeds. She doesn't, probably doesn't even realize how many women are going to follow in her footsteps because she stood up. So when we think about what's going on now, I just want you to hold out that hope. I'm an Indiana Democrat. I got nothing but hope. <laughs> <laughs> but if we can take a city like Indianapolis that is one-seventh of one-seventh of the city, of Indiana, 13% of the population lives in Indiana, and we can do all amazing progressive things, we know that can spread. And I'm very excited to be able to introduce the next person who's going to speak, because she's, I get to sit here in Indianapolis, I was born in the region and I come down here, and I get to sit in this beautiful, blue, progressive, wonderful <laughs> city. But I'm excited to introduce to you the next speaker. Um, Deb Chubb has been working hard to spread that progressive, to spread women's rights, to talk about women's issues, to bring them to the forefront. Do you know? I spent, I've spent 20 years, you guys don't know this, I've spent 20 years working in politics. I could not get the state party to say abortion out loud until last year, and now we're running on it hard. And Deb has unapologetically carried that on and is working with women across the state. So I'm so excited to get this stuff done. Thank I do go around the state and I try to recruit women, pro-choice women, to run for the state legislature. So you can imagine how depressing my life is. <laughs> <laughs> I've worked with many, many women all over the state and I you know, put many, many miles on my car. I go to um, wherever anyone will gather some women together and, um, and speak to them about running. And, um, and I work through all of the difficult parts of that. Um, you know, what, what Kathy had just mentioned. Um, you know, there's a real trauma when women realize that the Democratic Party doesn't really support Democratic women. Um, you know, you think you have found your tribe, and uh, and then you're kind of kicked to the curb. Uh, and so, uh, and, it, and it really, you know, it, it, as bad as it might be here in Indianapolis, imagine how it is out in the hinterlands of Indiana, um, where uh, I, I ask women in the group, you know, well, how many people, you know, have thought about running? Some hands go up and say, how many of you have been told um, that uh, if you have kids, you really shouldn't run? Uh, all the hands go up. How many people have told you, uh, you know, it's just not your time? Uh, all the hands go up. Um, how many people have told you, you know, you don't know enough or you don't have thick enough skin? All the hands go up. So it's really tough <laughs> to get women to run. And of course, the last two elections have done nothing but make it worse. Um, you know, in, in addition to the, the new redistricting issues. 
Um, but now we really do have to focus just on pro-choice women running and getting elected. This is all we can do. Um, the worst thing we can do is sit down and do nothing. Um, last election cycle in 2022, um, over 40 uh, Republican anti-choice uh, state legislators ran without a Democratic opponent. Um, we cannot allow that to happen. We cannot allow that to happen at, at all, ever. Um, most of the women that I've run with have never run for anything before. And, um, and so it's, it's, a, it's a large challenge. It's expensive, it's hard, it consumes your life. And, um, and you get attacked a lot, um, particularly in you know, Jefferson County. Uh, you know, uh, it's, it's bad. So, um, so we need your help. <laughs> um, and, and I wanna say, if nothing else, all of you out there, if you haven't thought about it, think about running. I know it is so out of the, you know, the, the spectrum of what you think on a daily basis, but you, there is nothing that says you shouldn't run. You should all run. Every woman in this room should be running yes. for office. We need all of you. And those who don't, don't run need to find someone else. Um, you know, over the years that I'm trying to convince women to run, um, I, you know, I'm often, the first thing that women say to me often is, oh no, I'm not qualified. And so, you know, of course my instinct is like reach over for a pulse. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but then you know, ultimately, what really tends to change women's minds is when I say, "Well, if not you, find me. Tell me someone who's more qualified than you." And that's when I think women start saying, "Hey, you know, I, I know a lot of stuff, and um, there really isn't anyone more qualified than me." And so think about that. Think about if you know someone who's more qualified than you to run, and I think you might end up with an empty empty list. I think it's you. I think it's you. I think you're the person to run. Um, you know, women in Indiana deserve more. They really deserve more. Um, we deserve to have dignity and uh, control over our own bodies, our own lives, um, our own futures. Uh, and when we are faced with this many um, anti-choice legislators whose mission is to make women unhealthy, uneducated, and poor, we really need to really come together and stand up. Each one of us has to stand up. It is a big fight. And you know, as Ali said, it's a, it's a long fight. And it really is. And it's uh, often not rewarded in your first time, um, or maybe ever. But it's still, we still have to do it. We still have to do it. So um, I hope you'll um, go to our website and, um, and check us out, make a donation. I make no money off of this. I have to get other jobs so that I can do all this. But I am, you know, just driven. I, this has to be done. Someone has to do it. Um, and so, and I do want to um, talk about um, Dr. Bernard. Um, we're so proud of her. I, because of this work, a bunch of my women friends nominated me for a torch for torchbearer award um, a few years ago, which was wonderful and delightful. And um, so that means then they call you and ask you to be on the council of judges for the next one for the next um, winner. And when Caitlin Bernard's name came up, I was beside myself. And I, 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 I admit that I told um, the group when we were meeting to make this decision about who should get these awards, if Caitlin Bernard doesn't get it, I'm going to start crying right now. <laughs> and, I, and they all were a little, you know, alarmed. Um, and so, um, so it was absolutely unanimous. This was something everyone on that, on that council knew was so important. What, what Dr. Bernard had done, it was so important. And what she has, you know, persevered through since then uh, was so important. And so uh, it was just a huge, uh, you know, kick in the gut, I mean, to say it in the kindest way, um, when suddenly, secretly, she was removed from the list. Um, and it was, it was just an outrage. And so um, and me and, and, um, and Lisa Wilkins, who I want to give a great shout out to, she's terrific, she's a veterans advocate and not to be messed with. Um, and, uh, and she and I really um, worked hard to make sure that this did not just get past by. And so, um, so we're just very proud of Dr. Bernard. But um, that's it for me. Um, I'm gonna pass it off to one of my big heroes, Senator Jean Bro. Thank you very much. Thank you, Deb, for all of your 
unrelenting work in the area of recruiting. Um, and just to reinforce what she said, um, the only way we're going to change the direction of the state of Indiana is to get progressive Democrats, preferably women, in elective office. So if it's not something you consider, consider it. If you know someone, thank you, Belinda, for stepping up. Belinda Drake, you stepped up. It's a hard, it's a hard, you know, it's a hard thing to do. Um, and it's an uncomfortable thing to do. Um, and I don't know if Andrea, Rep. Senator Andrea Hunley is in here, but she, she uh, stepped up and uh, she prevailed. So it's possible. You know, many of our districts are gerrymandered, something that Ann Stack knows a lot about. We have worked very hard, and I think there are others in this room that are working, that continue to work to try to ungerryman these districts, to get districts that are truly reflective of the communities in which they are located. But right now, they're, they're designed to, um, to protect a particular party, and so that then keeps that party uh, in, in office. And so the only way we're going to change this is to uh, defeat some of those folks who are in offices that need to be held by different parties, and then we might have the momentum necessary to address gerrymandering. Um, but I also wanted to say that I believe that the soul of May Sewell has fully inhabited Ali Brown. <laughs> <laughs>
difficult and also amazing to hear all of um, these great words. So I really appreciate it. And I love looking out into um, the crowd and seeing all of these familiar faces who I know have been so supportive of me over the past year, my department, my hospital, my health system, people I provide abortion with all the time. So thank you so much. Um, and especially people who aren't necessarily related to that, but they understand what this means for their community, what this means for their family themselves, um, and people in Indiana. I could never have anticipated any of this. Um, a year ago, when I, uh, a year and a half ago, when I was giving birth to my daughter and what my maternity leave and return to work would look like this year. Um, but every step of the way, I have had support from everybody that I know. Um, I think people are always worried about me, like people are, you know, being mean to you, and I'm like, no, I, I don't feel that at all. I only feel the support of all of you. The rest is just um, politics, right? And none of this is about that. None of this, um, the fact that I like know so many lawyers and politicians is <laughs> ridiculous. Like that is not at all what this is supposed to be. Um, I provide healthcare, plain and simple. Period. End of story. I'm just trying to do my job. Um, so I, but I, I appreciate that when I, um, this happened, I was able to stand up for what I believe and what I know all of you believe, which is the right to reproductive justice and human rights. Um, and so to see everyone continuing a year later and now hopefully more energized than ever, right? We knew that this was going to happen um, and now is the moment to rise to the occasion. Now is not the moment to feel defeatist, like, we live in Indiana, we knew that this was gonna happen and here we are and now we just have to take it. I think the lesson from all of the women who have spoken today um, is that that is not the thing that you should take from this. It is not that you will be persecuted if you stand up and speak out. It is not that I am beaten down because I am not. I have, have not felt that. I am not. Everybody asks me, when are you leaving? I am not leaving. I have no have needed abortions, um, a political law that is in effect saying that abortions are banned in Indiana does not stop that from being a reality. Now is the time to stand up for the people in Indiana who need abortions. Now is the time to become more active, yes. not less. Mm -hmm. yes. Now is not the time to become exhausted and defeatist. Now is the time to really step up for the people who need abortions with things like the Hoosier Abortion Fund, supporting women in your communities who are um, running for office, who are taking action in organizations that they need. I think um, Allie's, um, point about you know the intersection of the arts and education and politics and women's <laughs> suffrage and particularly the long game. This is not something that has happened um, like Roe versus Wade was perfect, right? This has always been a struggle. It will continue to be a struggle and now is not the time to see um, that, that we can't make change. Now is the time to move in the direction of change and reproductive justice for all. Right on.